provided us with sufficient warning before he passed his judgment. We find that we've all hit the bottom of life at that time, and God wants to come to our rescue, but he's not coming if we don't repent. We may feel that we've lost it all. Sometimes we feel that we've even lost the favor of God. But oh, we can learn from this Old Testament text tonight. I don't understand those who feel that the Old Testament is in the past and we should only preach from the New Testament. Because the Old Testament is the New Testament concealed. The New Testament is the Old Testament revealed. So much we can learn from the Old Testament and without properly understanding Understanding the Old Testament, we will never understand the New Testament. The great hope of the New Testament was conceived in the Old Testament. Salvation of the New Testament was released in the Old Testament. Jesus could not be who he professed to be without the power of the Old Testament. That's why I love preaching these Old Testament stories. Now, at this point, this is brilliant. Let us be like a fly on the wall. Let's look into this situation and see what's going on. And their excitement of winning the battle, the Philistines not only took the Israelites in the captivity, but they got a hold of the Ark of the Covenant. And they said, we are the victors. We are the best. And they carried the Ark of the Covenants to the city of Ashdod. And when the Philistines defeated the Israelites, they boasted as though they had beaten God himself. And I can imagine the elation and the jubilant celebration the Philistines momentarily enjoy over their apparent victory as they carry the Ark of God from Ebenezer to Ashdod, the northernmost of their five principal cities. And it's probably with great ceremony that the Philistines carry the Ark of God into the house of one of their principal gods, Dagon. Yeah. Don't miss this. The fact that Dagon was considered to be a supreme god or their supremacy god is not in doubt why the Ark of the Covenant was taken there because he was supposedly their most powerful god. And apparently Dagon was given credit for victory over the Hebrew God. And now this God would be brought to serve him. And they brought the, the uh, ark into the temple of Dagon and set it up beside him. And this gesture either symbolized the fact that Yahweh was now one of Dagon's attendants or the fact that that he was being absorbed into their pantheon under Dagon's leadership. The pantheon is a collaboration and a collection of many gods. I don't know about you, but I understand that there's a problem here. Because they placed the Ark of the Covenant up on a shelf by Dagon. And they probably felt that God himself now was being imprisoned in this place. Uh -huh. Now, I want you also to notice that Dagon had a house, but God had a tabernacle. Yeah. I picture God sitting high, just looking down to see what the Philistines would do next. The Ark of the Covenant was placed within the temple of Dagon in Ashdod, put on display as a trophy of victory for the Philistines. And at this point, the Philistines are slapping each other on the back and they are claiming that Dagon is more powerful than the God of Israel. The name Dagon means grain or fish. And uh, he was their agriculture god. And he was pagan in their uh, prominent farming and fertility rituals. And while the Philistines are rejoicing, the children of Israel do what they should have done to start with. They start weeping bitter tears. Right. They start doing some repenting. Right. Aren't you glad God is full of mercy? Yeah. Yeah. And when we repent and come back to Him with a whole heart, He cleanses us, delivers us, and sets us free. Yeah. Amen. Whew. 
Somebody say praise God. Praise God. God. Leaders have a very hard position. Uh, when there's failure uh, within the church, and they believe they have restored the person that's failed, that leader then has to know what time to put that person back into a position of doing their ministry. And leaders become so criticized over this. The assemblies of God will take you out of ministry for two years if you fail. Uh -huh. I had no idea it took God two years to forgive somebody. The church of God, to my understanding, will just eliminate you, period, and throw you away. I hope I'm wrong. But I want to tell you, God doesn't throw anybody away. Come on. Right, right. Come on. God is in the restoration business, and when a repentant heart comes before God with true godly repentance and turning away from their sin, hear me, beloved, God forgives and God forgets and God restores and God renews. Interesting turn. 